this does have a little blue light on it here so it does have power and if you plug this on nothing happens to the pi zero Okay, so today we finally received it. It is a Raspberry Pi Zero W. This is a first gen, it's not the Pi Zero 2, but it is a W version. You can see here it is a W 1.1, which means it has Wi Fi. So it comes with a 1 gigahertz ARM processor and a GPU with 512 megabytes of RAM, mini HDMI, micro USB, and micro USB power. Okay, so that's the power in, and this is an additional micro B connector to connect whatever you want, uh, mouse, keyboard, other such things, extra storage if you want. You can do a hub. You can do a hat connector here, it has a CSI camera connector, has Bluetooth 4.0, which might be Bluetooth 4.1, I'd have to check, and also Wi-Fi. And this is your micro SD card to put your storage in there. And that's it, super simple little computer that's great for little projects. Not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with it. I originally bought this so that we could get Octoprint on my 3D printer, which is the Prusa MK3S Plus. We might still do that, but now that the MK4S is out, or the MK4 printer is out, that comes with Wi-Fi, we might just upgrade to that one. So let's take a look at uh, what we can do with this and how to get things started with it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get your micro SD card. So I've got a bunch of these kind of just spare laying around. This one's a 32 gigabyte one. That's what I have. We're gonna use this. You're also gonna want a micro SD reader or just an SD card reader with a, an adapter that will go to just a regular SD card. So my card reader that I currently have is a Ugreen card reader. It has a slot for the small cards and the SD cards, the micro and the regular SD. It's got a couple other connectors on it too, but never used them. So we'll put this in and we will get the Raspberry Pi OS onto here. So we'll need a few things to do that so we'll plug in our SD card here and we'll format it okay so we've plugged in our SD card here it is here there should be nothing on it and it's formatted to NTFS or FAT32 which is perfectly fine so the next thing we're gonna want to do is go to the Raspberry Pi website and download the software for the imager so let's go We can just go to raspberrypi.com, select software, and the imaging software should be here. Just download it for your OS. And we'll install it. Run it. Okay, so the operating system that we're gonna choose depending on which Raspberry Pi we have. This one is the Pi Zero. So you can just choose the default 32-bit one. The Pi Zero only runs the 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi, not the 64-bit. So there should be other options here. There's the light, the full, uh, the 64-bit, 64-bit light, uh, legacy, and legacy light. So there's quite a few options to choose from. 
I'm going to go with the full OS. I don't know what they removed from the light. It looks like mostly the desktop, so I do want a desktop just to poke around in it. So we'll go with this one. The light version has no desktop environment, so it's just going to be CLI and command prompts. So we'll go full. I'll choose the storage. It should automatically choose your one empty SD card that you have on there. Uh, that's what it's done here for me. So the 32 gigabyte mounted as S. That's correct. It's mounted here in the background as S and it's a 32 gig. Now what we'll also want to do is because we don't have a keyboard or mouse plugged into this Raspberry Pi, in order to log into it or do anything with it without having to plug in a OTG adapter, which will adapt the micro SD into a full size USB so you can plug a USB in. I do have one of those adapters. I would just prefer not to use one and make it a little bit easier. So we'll go to the gear icon here for advanced and we're going to do a couple things. We're going to set the host name to raspberry pi.local. We're going to enable SSH. We'll use password authentication and we'll set a password here. We will also configure our wireless LAN. So go ahead and get your Wi-Fi name. Make sure you type it in here correctly. The one that I'm going to use is called Skynet and we'll put in the password for it. So this way, when it sets it up, it's going to automatically connect to the Wi-Fi. We'll select our country, Canada. The locale settings are fine and this should be good. So we'll save and we'll select right and we'll wait for it to finish. Obviously, it's going to wipe out all the data that's on your card. So make sure that there's nothing on there that you need. Okay. This will take um, probably about 20 minutes, depending on the size of your SD card. It's going to clear everything off of there and write the OS so that it's bootable when you plug in your Pi Zero. So we'll wait for that and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so the SD card is done. We had to redo it. There was an issue with it. When it finished, it thought it was ejected or damaged. So I reran it and it looks like it properly finished this time. So we'll remove it. Let's see if we can boot it up now. So we'll take out our little card here. So just for demonstration what we're going to do is we are going to plug this cable and this is a magnetic adapter which will make it easier for us to unplug and plug in without damaging the micro usb which are kind of prone to it so we'll plug that in we're not going to plug in the sd card i just want to show that these this does have a little blue light on it here so it does have power and if you plug this on, nothing happens to the Pi Zero. It is plugged into the power portion here. I don't know if you'll be able to read this, but it does say PWR on this S on this micro USB slot. So it might seem that this is dead or it doesn't work. There should be a light that lights up. I believe it's here on the corner, but it doesn't. The reason is because there's no OS and the OS is what controls the light, I believe. So even if we plugged in, let's just say another micro SD card that doesn't have Raspberry Pi installed on it. So this one doesn't have anything on it. Micro SD card is on there it still looks like nothing is happening no lights no sign of life power to the cable because the blue light is on so let's see if we plug in our formatted SD card 
and we'll see that when we plug this in, we should get a green light pretty quickly. Okay, so there's our green light. So if you're booting up your Raspberry Pi, it's not dead if it doesn't light up. You just need to have Raspberry Pi OS on a card. So we did set this up with SSH enabled. So we don't need to plug a keyboard or a monitor or anything in there to get access to it. But what we can do, what I do have is a HDMI mini to regular sized HDMI and or an HDMI OTG. This is an on the go cable that we can plug into here and get it onto our screen. So let's do that. We'll watch it boot up and see what it says. Okay, so this is the boot up sequence. A little bit of a slow device, but not much you can expect for a one gigahertz ARM processor and a little tiny package. So we'll be patient. So we'll let it boot up and get settled in, do its first boot up and run time and get connected to the Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. And we'll revisit our OS and see what it's like. Some final touches on the setup. I think it'll go through some a couple boot cycles like this on the first boot up, which is fine. We'll leave it for 10 minutes or so. Okay, perfect. Didn't quite take 10 minutes. Maybe it rebooted twice, I think, and it took about four or five minutes. So now I don't have a keyboard plugged into this. We can show the device just sitting here. So it's just sitting here. It's got power and the HDMI cable out to the either monitor or your PC where you can see what's going on. So I have no way to type a username or password or log in or anything like that with a mouse or keyboard unless I plugged in a OTG device like this where it converts a micro SD to a full size, sorry, a micro USB to a full size USB. This one's a little bit thick, so it doesn't really fit on here very good uh, with the power. But if you plug in one of these devices, you'll be able to plug in a keyboard. So you can connect this to your monitor. This one just came with my old phone. This is a Samsung one. If I want it to fit better, I can crack the shell off and uh, pull it out. And that works fine. We're not going to do that. We did configure... SSH on this so that we can SSH into it and get keyboard access that way. So let's do that. So we'll just switch over the monitor here. We'll open up our SSH. The first thing we're going to need to know is the IP address of the Pi Zero. So you're going to want to log into your ISP router or your network, network configuration, and find the IP. So I'm going to do that. And the IP address from my router is 192.168.0.156. So I'll go ahead and log in there. We'll acknowledge that it's a new key. And we should have our prompt. And in the configuration for the Raspberry Pi Imager, it was set up as the user admin. And we gave it a password. And we should get logged in here. I should type the password incorrectly. Okay, so now we're in. So this doesn't really give us much other than CLI access. We can still install stuff here just like you would in a regular Raspberry Pi, but we installed the image with the desktop experience on it. So we want access to that and we can get access that way through VNC, but the VNC server is not enabled. So we have to log in through SSH and enable the VNC server so that we can use VNC to get our desktop. So to get your VNC, all we have to do is type sudo raspi-config, and this will give us our configuration options. 
there's lots of options here, you know, system display, your performance, which some of them aren't gonna be available for the Pi Zero, which is fine. We're interested in interface options. And here you get all your basic interface options. One we have enabled already is SSH. What we want to enable now is VNC. So select VNC and select yes, you'd like to enable it. Perfect, it took a couple seconds. Uh, VNC server, the VNC server is enabled. And now we can exit out of that. And now we can open up VNC. Type in our IP address. Hit enter. And it's gonna prompt us for our username and password. We'll use the same username and password that we used for our SSH session. We'll say remember, so we can just double click on it in the menu. And there it is. This is where we left off on the other screen that we are seeing the output of the monitor for the Raspberry Pi. So go ahead and type in your password for the admin user. and let it log in. It might take a few minutes for menus and all that to start up just because it's a slow device, but we'll wait for it to come up. It might take a minute and we'll see what happens. And now we can close our SSH session. Okay, so there we have, we're onto the desktop here. We have our Wi-Fi, our Bluetooth, this is our VNC connection. It will probably take a few minutes. It'll ask us to update and so on and so forth and we'll go through all those updates and we'll get a project going i have a few projects that i do have in mind for it i'm not sure which one i want to go with if you have any good ideas leave a comment below let me know what you like to see done with the raspberry pi there's lots of cool projects that can be done with them uh, for such a small little compute device so leave a comment and let me know if you'd like anything in particular to see with it but for now we're going to let this run there's our updates up in the corner and uh i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye